You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Hey guys, before we get started with the show, let me tell you a little bit about Dodge. See your authorized Dodge dealer and experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive. Go to Dodge.com and check out our powerful lineup. Welcome to Castrol Car Cast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, and here on the phone again with us is Bill Goldberg. How are you? Oh, man, I'm just peachy, dude. Just <laughs> awesome. Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever day it is, I don't even know, man. Just, man <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk some automobiles. Yeah, what's, uh, what's the latest? Now, uh, just get a quick update on your rise, because you saw you did. Last week, we talked about the, uh, the rear seat delete that you were doing on... Uh, on uh, your Hellcat or the Demon? On Demon. The, on the Demon? And yeah. we're, we're, we're sort of deciding, is this going to be a big project? Who should tackle this? Do you, do, you, do you go to a shop? What happened? I saw you did some posts. You, you did the work, right? Yeah, I did it all, man. You know, um, the, the fact is that, you know, if you want something done right, you do it yourself. But I, I, I somehow found the patience to... to <laughs> dissect the the rear seat you know and uh everything associated took the seats out and you know it all it is is a big puzzle um fortunately like i said there's two sides of it so if i did something wrong on one i could rectify it on the other and um i i i tackled it myself and i'm glad that i did i took the demon out uh friday night went to a little uh showtime boxing up at pachanga mm-hmm and, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, that, uh, the rear bar I put in the trunk, that thing is pretty effective. I saw a difference immediately in the stiffening of the rear end of that car. Wow. Is it louder? So, um, with oh, a- it's definitely louder. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. But right. That's a, with that's no seat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't that's buy that car for the- for me. You don't call, you don't buy that car for the stereo, right? You buy it. <laughs> no, not not after the MagnaFlow uh, headers and exhaust go in. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's um, only one way to go from there, and that's up. So, right. and uh, uh, Richard Waitis over at MagnaFlow is still working on the on the Hellcat. Man, Hellcat. Uh, let's see, bare brakes are being installed as we speak, nice. and uh, you know it's just getting prepped to be at SEMA and MagnaFlow's booth. Um, show off that suspension, and yeah, that's uh, we're wide body kits next up on the plate. Uh, hopefully, I'll uh, secure that at SEMA. As most everyone goes to SEMA with at least one or two parts in mind, that's on my uh, my shopping list. Yeah, man, it's coming up quick. So and yours? What's on, I know something's got to be on your list coming up at SEMA, and SEMA's on everybody's mind. So let's talk about it. Yeah, What's on your list? you know that's that's a good question. I uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I've the got short list. <laughs> yeah, you know I I think uh, right now um, uh, you know I I'm probably I'm probably going to sell the Alfa Romeo so I can put more time into uh, and money into uh, into the into the Mustang and get it going and sort of the the directive on that is is. I just want to finish up and get it running and get it tuned um, so it's it's mobile and I can play around with some – I just want to dial it in a little bit. Like if I get the engine up and running, which which wouldn't take that much, it's just a matter of getting enough time to get in there and, and finish up the – fabbing up the, the, the brackets for the supercharger and stuff. Um, and then I'll take it over to uh, my buddy Ray McClellan over at uh, Full Throttle Customs. He'll do the tune on the whole thing. But he's got to fire it up for the first time because the engine's built. It's been sitting a while, so he needs to do the first fire up. He needs to get a base tune in there. He needs to oil the engine and and uh, and whatnot. So I can't even like fire it up with you know, or at least turn it over without uh, him going through it first. But if I got it fired up and mobile, then I can get it down the street. I can uh, you know work on some of the. Uh, uh, fine tune the engine tune, fine tune some of the suspension tuning, and then bring it back in and 
and start finishing up like all the details and the powder coating and everything else. But you're right. It's, it's like as I'm walking around SEMA, it's always like that product's new. That product's new. I could use that. That thing's cool. Where do I sign up? <laughs> so there's, there's, there's always <laughs> quite a bit of that. Uh, uh, we're going to get list. Oh, I know. We're going to have a good time at SEMA, as we always do. It's going to be busy and hectic, but uh, it's it's going to be fun. Um, certainly, you got to get a little bit of play in between the work, and I've always been able to do that in uh, small doses, and hopefully this year I can do it in a little bit larger one because my list is a little bit larger. So. Yeah, you know whether it's whether it's wheels for uh, Wanda's F two fifty or whether it's uh, more goodies for uh, this this Challenger. Yeah, road course car we're building. You know, it's going to be uh, it's it's, it's going to be an open plate. So can't wait. Well, you mentioned F two fifty. Let's talk about trucks for a second. Um, Ford sent me over a new Raptor. And uh-huh. I have been uh, driving this car for just a couple of days, um, but uh, certainly interesting. And I, all I can perfect, do is just perfect LA traffic vehicle. Uh, it, you know, it, and it's funny. Um, there's definitely some some yeah. There's definitely some things to say about that. Like, listen, we we all know the specs on this thing already. We know it's a three and a half liter EcoBoost twin turbo V6. We got 450 ho- horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque with a 10-speed automatic transmission. I, I talked to uh, Dan Edmonds um, from Edmonds.com this morning. And I was like, break down some of the off roadiness of it and some of the performance tests, because we don't do that here, right? We don't do those 0-60 to <laughs> tests and whatnot. We just go out and have some fun and give you an opinion. And he said they got that thing going 0-60 to in 5.8 seconds and quarter mile in like 14.2, something around there. Um, and I think they pulled like 0. 0.7 on the skid pad, if I recall correctly. Um, but that's those are fantastic numbers for this truck. It's a purpose built truck. It's meant to be uh, a, a fun off roader or a weekend warrior off roader. Um, and he brought up some pretty interesting points. Is that yes, it's big, uh, it's heavy, it's it's wide, um, but uh, all with with intention, right? He said. Uh, from the off-road standpoint, Perfect. yeah, he's like, look, it's it's not the best handling thing in the world because of the off-road suspension, and and it has a little brake dive, and it's and it's heavy, and it's got the big tire, so you know, braking from sixty to zero is like I don't know, one hundred and sixty feet or something. So you know, like you would any lifted truck, you got to give it a little extra time. Um, uh, two things he pointed out to me were, um, if you want to tow stuff. Get a regular F-150. This isn't really what the Raptor was designed to do. Sure, it has a tow rating and stuff, but it's just not – not I remember when that. you couldn't tow. I remember when you couldn't tow with a Raptor. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, and we've seen trucks like, oh, look, by the way, you think of, you think of like the GMC Cyclone from back in the day, which I love, the little all-wheel drive, you know, fast, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Grand National engine. But not only could you not tow, I don't even think you were allowed to put anything in the bed of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like that's that was pretty much it. So, uh, one thing he pointed out was, which I realized is, is if you look at the marketing of the Raptor, Ford's doing a great job and showing it, doing some pretty fun high speed things out in the desert and in the dirt and the sand dunes. And that's what this is. If you want to do some rock crawling or some really adventure stuff, tight through the trees and whatnot, um, uh, this is not a Jeep. Right, this is a lot bigger and wider, and you're not really going to fit in a lot of those things that the Jeep guys were doing. So, uh, so just understand that it's a purpose-built truck for that. Now, that being said, it's actually pretty cool. I like this thing a lot. First of all, the one I got is is the bright blue with with without the graphics package on it, and it looks great. Black wheels, uh, it looks fantastic. I think the engine. Is great. I think the engine has some good power. Um, I think zero to sixteen five point eight is good, but it's like the previous Raptor with the V eight by far sounded better. And I drove one with a Roush supercharger on it. Roush that went over with six hundred horsepower, and the thing was an animal. It sounded great. It was fast, and it's just it just made all the noises that you expect, like your demon does. Mm-hmm. Um, so my thought would be. If you're getting a Raptor, chances are 
you're a real enthusiast like the rest of us. Anybody listening to this is is mm-hmm. is an enthusiast. So uh, go ahead and call somebody like Richard Waitis and go, hey, man, my Raptor's too quiet. we got to put some exhaust on this thing. Magnaflow, what do you got for me? Because it needs exhaust. I When I drive it, for some reason, I think I hear the intake noise more than I hear the exhaust, and it has me start to question, and I didn't read about it, but I'm questioning whether or not Ford is piping in some uh, sound into the cab. Um, it's yeah. very possible you know, that they're you're, doing you're, but but if you look at it in a, a microcosm, the the first thing that you pointed out was the exhaust sound. So I mean, it's a for for what it is, and I've driven one for a, a short period of time. Uh, I think it's a great package. Um, if if just doing something to the exhaust, you know, whether it's putting headers on it or or just tuning it mm-hmm. or putting a new exhaust system on it, is it? It's pretty much of a a great package. I don't, I don't want to say starter package because that thing is far more than a starter vehicle. But, I mean, for a purpose-built vehicle, I think it's a, it's a great package they put together. You're, you're absolutely right. And I would agree with that. I, look, by the way, you want some more power, you can, like we said, we talked about SEMA, go to any one of those booths, go to a Diablo Sport, go to a Super Chips, go to any one of those guys with a handheld tuner. And for, you know, three, four, or 500 bucks, you're going to get 50 extra horsepower and 80 pound feet of torque like you're just you know uh-huh. all you need is just plug in and and crank up uh crank up the power a little bit because it's turbo and you kind of have some room to do that you know uh are, are the other parts of the country like every place other than here that has good gas <laughs> uh especially yeah. if you have 93 octane you're really going to benefit but here's things th- this truck is made for 91 octane anyway so you know if you're worried about Putting 87 in it or the gas mileage, you probably don't get a Raptor. But uh, <laughs> um, but this is one of the things I loved about it. This 10-speed transmission. This is the 10-speed transmission that Ford co-developed with GM. It's in the new Mustangs. Uh, it's in the, the Camaro. Well, it's in the Raptor, and it is fantastic. This 10-speed transmission is fantastic. And you think, why do you need 10 speeds? Well, the answer is you probably don't, but uh, but this allows them to do uh, a taller first gear and allows them to give you uh, one or two overdrive gears, ninth and tenth, and they've got this thing so dialed in that uh, the calibration on this skips gears. It'll go four to six or six down to four, and you know it it skip it skips gears, but it's completely seamless. It feels almost like a CVT transmission. It almost feels like a continuously variable transmission, um, but without being crappy like a CVT. Uh, I think they definitely dialed in this transmission to do the best it can possibly do with this truck. Its size, its weight, its power. Um, so uh, I think that's a good... That's a good. Do you think that that and the so that and the uh, and the move to the V six were the two biggest changes for for this year's this year's truck? Yeah, I think that makes all the difference in the world. I think they did some fine tuning on the suspension and stuff, but the Fox suspension, the Fox shocks, and all that stuff did such a great job before. Uh, why mess with success? So they continued with that. They made some adjustments to it, I believe. Um, and you know, and then it has all the comfort features, like the seats are great. And although it feels like there's a lot of plastic and stuff on the inside, a lot of it has like the soft touch materials. So if you bump around and you bang an elbow here or an elbow there, it's usually something that's a little bit softer. So that's pretty good. The one I'm driving around is 65 grand. Uh, yeah, not not inexpensive for a truck, but uh, you know, it's got heated and cooled seats. It's got Apple CarPlay. It's got remote start. It's you know, it's got all these cool features. You 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 know, uh, uh, you double click the the key fob and the tailgate opens, and you know, it's got all the all the cool stuff on it that makes it a little bit uh, well, certainly makes it super comfortable for everyday driving. Uh, there's no way you get into a truck like this and don't notice the tires. I mean, it's got an off-road tire on it, and they've done their best to give you the most off-road tire but also be as quiet as possible. But you do hear it. You do hear it. You hear those those big knobby tires uh, a little bit on the road. I'm just driving around on the freeway. But I don't know, man. It seems like it's— What uh, tire comes on it? Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't recall the exact brand. I want to say they're 34s or 35s. Um, uh, 
but you're right. I don't know exactly what 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 tire is on it. Maybe uh, maybe we can dig that up. But um, but it's good. Like it's just it just uh, seems to to work well. So I I did you know I did the very LA thing right. So uh, I I took it out last night. I went on a date last night. This date did not cost me seven thousand dollars like the last time I went on a date and blew up a supercharger and BMW. So, so I'm already like way ahead of the dri- game. You're driving someone else's car. <laughs> yeah, so I'm already way ahead of the game. So, uh, 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 th- two things I noticed is first, I'm going into Santa Monica. I live on the west side. I'm going to Santa Monica, and I'm like, uh, let me before I go. Let me find out how tall this truck is, six and a half feet. So can I get in a parking garage? And the answer is yes. I get into a parking garage, no problem. But the stupid antenna coming off the front fender, first of all, why do we still have that? Why do we have a regular antenna? You're trying to save a couple of bucks. Maybe it's cheaper than putting it in the glass. It's a $65,000 truck. Get rid of the stupid antenna. Okay? All right. If you can't get rid of the antenna... Why make the antenna nine feet or eight and a half feet? The truck is six and a half. Don't make it any taller than the truck. I pull into this parking garage. I'm like, great. No problem. Truck fits easy. And then I'm driving around for a spot and I'm ding, 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 ding. The antenna's whacking the, each beam in the parking garage. And now it's embarrassing. Now it's date night. Now it's embarrassing. And the, we're like, what is that? It's like these stupid antennas just hitting everything. And then uh, afterwards, I was like, hey, what, what floor do they park on? She goes, I don't know, about 120 dings? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, I guess that's about what it, what it was on the way, uh, on the way up uh, into the garage. So I don't understand the antenna thing. I just don't get it. Like every car seems like we can get away with no antenna now. And why does this have a conventional antenna? I know you can go to AutoZone or any Pep Boys or whatever and just unscrew this antenna and buy the shorty one, uh, and it probably works fine. But I just don't get why why it, it, it needs this. Maybe there's a reason for it. I don't know. But I, I just feel like we're we're beyond this, right? Like – the, the antenna plus on the front fender, it looks stupid. It hits stuff. Why make it taller than the truck? I don't know. It just it – was, it was irritating me, the antenna. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm driving down the street, and I'm like, I got to test some of the off-road capability of this thing. Uh, sorry to drag you along for this. Um, but so uh, what did you do, jump curbs? I was just – yeah, I just made a U-turn like on Santa Monica Boulevard. And I was just like up on a sidewalk, and I like drove through like a, like a Taco Bell parking lot over the concrete and the grass and back into the sidewalk into the street. She was just laughing, having a great time. And I was like, what did you think? She's like, I didn't feel a thing. I was like, great. The suspension works. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no laws broken whatsoever. No, you know it was all a closed course portion of Santa Monica Boulevard. Um, yeah, uh, it was late. It was late at night. It was uh, no big deal. But um, uh, but to its credit, it is exactly that. And so I called up uh, Dan Edmonds again, uh, and I was like, "Hey, you know." I was going on the curbs. Tell me more about the off-road stuff. You've done the testing. And he's like, yes, it's fantastic for that. If you're doing some high-speed stuff, you're doing some of the whoops out there. If you're going out and just into, into the sand, he's like, this thing just floats over those bumps uh, fantastically. And it's definitely used for that. And almost, almost pre-runner-ish. Like, you kind of want to see a version of this truck that's two-wheel drive and lighter weight without without the whole front uh, – uh, drive system and just do like what would this thing be like with 500 pounds less weight just two-wheel drive sort of pre-runner truck i think that'd be kind of cool i mean obviously you can put it in two-wheel drive mode but what about the rate the weight reduction and and whatnot i think that would be a very interesting version of this truck ford won't make it it doesn't make sense the aftermarket certainly can right just go get an f-150 front piece and an axle or whatever and and try to fit it in there if you really want to mess around with it but it was good it's fun i mean i i like it it's uh uh i think you'd like it it's I, it'd be something that you would have fun with um uh and could fit I, into I like it now now what are its competitors you know dodge has been talking about this this truck for a while um you know what are what are the what's the what's the market out there yeah, so I asked Dan that as well, and he was saying that um, that 
Dodge had a, a prototype truck or a concept truck that he saw somewhere like a Texas State Fair or something that they were showing the truck. And he's like, it could be a Raptor and better. Um, he said, uh, it, you know, the one thing he liked is the Dodge version would have a V8. Uh, I don't know what their business case is if, if they're going to move forward with it, but um, – uh, but it certainly is a possibility. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, and plus we have the aftermarket world where you can go get trucks from AEM, or AEV um, and other, you know, sort of turnkey solutions out there. But certainly uh, I-, I love what these guys are doing um, with with this Raptor. I mean, it's a little it's it's a little hokey for me in L.A. Uh, as a daily driver, but. I tell you, like if I was back in Arizona, if I lived in Colorado or something that had a place that had some weather or a place like Arizona that had uh, some off-road. down, that would be the vehicle. It would be so much fun. Like, by the way, like a place like Arizona, sure, you can have your sports car, which is great because the roads are big and wide and flat. um, But you'd have to have one of these things. Like, just why not? Because you'd be missing out. Like, why else would you live in Arizona if you're not going to go out and do desert stuff? Otherwise, it's just boring. (laughs) And hot. Uh, And hot, right. Um, All right, so enough about the Raptor. I wanted to... uh, uh, Check in with uh, what's going on with Tesla. Uh, Tesla's always in the news. Uh, you know, we we know that uh, Elon Musk sent out his uh, tweet a little while back saying that uh, he wants to take Tesla private. He's got funding secured from a private, you know, whatever whatever investment, some Saudi Arabia sovereign wealth fund. Basically, he said he's going to take it red private. Flag, red flag. Red flag. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to take it private at four hundred and twenty dollars a share. You can't just tweet that. You understand that that's complicated to do. You can't solicit that kind of stuff. There's lots of paperwork needs to be filed. So the SEC sues him and says you can't just blurt that out. They reach a settlement agreement uh, after a few rounds. Uh, the settlement agreement is Elon Musk needs to step down as chairman of Tesla. He's still CEO. He's going to run it. He needs to step down or basically just give up his chairman title, and they need two new board members. Uh, uh, well, well, that's nothing compared to the money he's got to pay. Right. So he has to pay $20 million, and Tesla <laughs> has to pay $20 million. So his tweet cost $40 million. <laughs> and what you what the SEC poses fines like that not just to you know slap you on the wrist but when you blurt out something like that people buy sell stock short the stock do whatever and then you have to backtrack and then people start to sue so the SEC is saying well we're going to put 40 million dollars in the bank and and that's going to be allocated to people that got screwed when you made the announcement, you know, when, wh- 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 however the stock. Uh, now, this is why Elon Musk doesn't care. Because the day, the day he sent out, the, the day that the SEC said, we're going to sue you, the stock dropped 14%. <laughs> yep. The day they said, we reached a settlement agreement and you're still going to remain CEO, the stock jumped 16%. So he got his $40 million bucks back just at his stock. Both Tesla and, and, uh, and Elon got his, got his stock back. So it really just kind of unaffects him. And then he went and tweeted some naughty by nature video. So basically saying he's not, he's not going to shut up. He's just going to keep doing what he's going to do. But uh, interesting that uh, that's where he is. <laughs> that's what's going on with him. Um, there's uh there's one other thing I want to mention that I thought was kind of crazy about this Porsche dealer. But before I do, I'm going to tell you guys about Continental Tires. If you think of all the weird things that you find in cars, I'm not talking about garden variety petrified fries. <laughs> nice. <laughs> or, uh, or melted crayons. I'm talking about live snakes, bizarre trinkets, and the kind of stuff that makes you just wonder about folks. Another thing that'll make you wonder, but in a good way, are Continental belts. I bet you didn't know that they're OE in tens of millions of Chrysler, Dodge, Ford, and GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. They're also OE in a majority of BMWs and VWs. 
And now Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE pedigree. It's their OE technology series. These belts are fanatically engineered for perfect fit, form, and function. And Continental has an OE technology series multi-V belt for 98% of the vehicles on the road in the U.S. and Canada. So listen, you've got enough surprises working on your cars and trucks already. A belt shouldn't be one of them. Go with the Continental OE Technology Series Multi-V Belt, the belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. To get the full story, visit oetechnologyseries.com. Um, okay, we're going to be running out of time. I'm going to keep it a short show, but i got to mention this other thing. I just don't get people, man. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this, Bill, but um, I, used to live in, I used to live in South Florida, and not far from me was – the greatest Porsche dealer ever called Champion Porsche. They were in Pompano Beach. Uh, they just had a reputation. They run a racing team. They just huge place. Uh, so one of one of the guys there, uh, I don't know, he's like a VP of marketing or something. Uh, he was convincing customers to send deposits in for like special order 911 GT3 and GT2 RS models. Uh, models that they weren't getting. So people were giving deposits to some shell company he set up uh, called Champion Autosport. People were wiring money and to this Champion you. Autosport. And that surprises you after you live there? <laughs> right. Yeah, actually, I'm, really? not, I'm not surprised. And then he was funneling the money out of this shell company into his own account. So he scammed $2.5 million from people. Mm-hmm. And this isn't the first time he's done this. Now that they're digging into it, I think he scammed more money. I think he he, uh, uh, he was in some other fraudulent scheme and scammed like another half a million dollars. Now, he's on the run. Like, they can't find him. They can't find his wife. He's rolling around with $2.5 million of somebody's money. Champion Porsche, I've always understood to be a reputable dealer. So, obviously, this is just bad luck for them. But now they have to basically do the right thing. So, they're stepping up and saying, we're going to cover all the $2.5 million. We're going to issue refunds because they have no choice. That's the right thing to do. That's what they need to do, right? Uh, But, man, what a shit situation. (laughs) That's an understatement, man. Are you kidding me? I mean, how – I mean, so the guy's done it before. And how can you not – have figured that out in his his uh, his job interview, but uh, I, I don't I don't know, man. That that seems to be um, a, 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 a a usual occurrence in that floor in that state of Florida. <laughs> yeah, um, I do not know why, but uh, it, it that does not surprise me one bit. I don't know Champion uh, Motorsports. But uh, you know that that doesn't surprise me, being where it's where it's at. It 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 is it. You're right, but it's like now you can't even run a a, a car dealer without doing background checks on the on the people that sell cars for you or do marketing for you. Like this is this is the world we live in. I don't know. I just feel like we can do better. Everybody do well, better. That's an, yeah. You know <laughs> what? It's a it's a day and age of uh, let's get stuff done as quickly as and and uh, efficiently as possible. And so I think they're doing that on background checks also. Yeah. Um. All right, guys. We're gonna wrap let's things. Let's talk up. about this three hundred mile an hour car. We got a, we got two minutes. We got yeah, we do. Yeah. To talk about that. Yeah. Shoot. We uh, Throw it out there, man. I want to talk about that. All right. So uh, our, John Hennessy. Uh, everybody knows Hennessy. Um, we know John. I think he's been here on the show with Adam and I uh, a while back. Um, what was the other? What was the other supercar he made? It was like part Lotus, and eh, I forgot the name of it. But um, maybe that was a Venom as well. And the new one's a Venom F5. But anyway, I, I, he brought that car here. We we drove around in that car. It's fast, um, but it's kind of a tube frame chassis, so it's very bumpy. There's not a lot of absorbing uh, much of the road, but. Um, Hennessy's been working on this Venom F5 for a while now, and he, he really wants to go 300 miles an hour, and now he's kind of doing the math on it, and he's saying, I think we could do 310, maybe 311. And, uh, yeah. 1,700 uh, horsepower. Let's do it. And it's, it's, it's crazy. He, over up in, in Monterey this past uh, uh, August, he had the car on display, you know, the, the, the model, basically, the, the, the prototype car. Uh, you know, whatever, no interior and stuff, just full size, 
model of the car. I guess it rolls around and stuff. Um, I don't know how far along he is, but he had it on display at Gordon McCall's uh, Jet Center event. Um, and it looks fantastic in person. Um, it's very, very cool. Uh, and then he had the engine on display at the Quail. And it was sort of, it's like an all aluminum, uh, you know, pretty much would expect a push rod V8. It's, it's, it's very interesting and it's got, you know, a cool intake and twin turbos and, but not, it, you know, he's not doing twin cam, four valve. It's not that innovative. It's just, it's just American muscle pumped up to 11, basically, is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not anything super trick. I don't think it's like a trick hemi head. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this thing's gonna. This thing's gonna have. I think the technical term is crap loads of suspension or uh, of horsepower. <laughs> uh, uh, so how does it? How does it statistically match up with that SSC that they've been thinking about coming out with, which I've seen, which is an absolutely jaw dropping looking car. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where that's going to go, but I do know that every time Hennessy says stuff like this, um, Konazag listens very closely. And Konazag is like, if you're going to go 311, I'm going to go 312. He's that guy. He's doing it all in good fun. This is good, fun, yeah. competitive uh, of NISC between, between these guys. This isn't like, you know, I'm, you know the, the, this isn't them yelling at each other. It's not acrimonious. They're, they're having fun with it. Um, uh, so I think no, the, and we all ben- and, and we all benefit, right? And we're, we're getting cool stuff. Uh, uh, so uh, Hennessy's going to do it with a six, uh, sorry, seven point six liter twin turbo pushrod V eight. Um, they think it's going to be sixteen hundred horsepower at seventy two hundred RPM, and Kona's egg is going to do it with his sort of bespoke engine with like the I don't know the 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 springless valves or something that he's doing. I forgot what his what his technology was. Um, we talked about it before, but I forgot what the technology was. Um, that uh, is super interesting that he's doing where each valve has a spring and it has an oil control system on it. So like we can change timing, like, like, you know, the, the adjustable timing and, you know, in a lot of cars is done by oil pressure. Um, but what he has is a computer chip, basically a module on every single valve. So he can, he can control each valve independently, uh, Kona's egg. Super, super trick stuff. Like, we, we'll have to get into that more at some point. But Other um, end of the spectrum from what Hennessy's doing. Yeah, different way. Just a completely different way of doing things, um, and they're both going after the same goal. But we like that. One's not, like, super competitive with the other. But um, uh, anyway, we've got to give up this studio. I apologize for that, guys. Um, I'll, you know what? We'll get some more stuff about the Hennessy. Uh, our buddy Robert Angelo that uh, we've had on the show back before, and he's been on Shift and Steer and CarCast, I believe he does all the videos for Hennessy. So he's been around documenting the Venom F5 for years. Uh, so we'll ask him to come in at some point and, and talk about it. So, um, and he came in and, and brought the GT, Venom GT Spider. That's what Hennessy brought in before. Yeah, yeah the Venom GT the Spider. One, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, we're going to wrap it up. I can tell you guys again about Dodge. Your authorized Dodge dealer invites you to experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive today. Go to Dodge.com or visit your Dodge dealer to learn more about the exciting offers on our powerful lineup. Chances are you'll see Goldberg there. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. All, all i can say is uh, uh an addendum to that is watch out for goldberg claws he's, he's coming out of retirement oh yeah uh I, w- I won't say anything more okay all right guys thank you so much as always you can check us out at carcastshow.com you can follow me at moderator on all the social media uh you can follow goldberg at goldberg and goldberg garage on twitter and goldberg 95 and goldberg's garage on instagram are all those accounts up and going again up and going and back in my possession. All right. Thank so you. Uh, Bill, thanks again for calling in. Chris, thank you for producing. Um, until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. Here you go, gentlemen. Until next time. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana.
For more information, visit carcastshow.com. 